How's it going everyone? This is my blank. Welcome back to my channel where I have gotten a huge and overwhelming amount of people asking me for a RAM overclocking guide on Ryzen. And I thought I'd do you one better, so I'll leave you with 5 tips that I regularly use to overclock RAM on my 1700X paired with the Asus Crosshair 6 Hero motherboard. So is this specifically for this CPU and motherboard combo? Well yeah, I'd be outright lying if I'd extend this guide over to any motherboard. Not all motherboards have the same BIOS settings or overclock headroom, just like not all IMCs, integrated memory controllers, are made equal. It's here that I also think that I might have gotten lucky, not with the RAM itself. However, you are free to apply as many pointers as possible on your own board from what I'm about to show. But since there's a bunch of people running the Crosshair 6 Hero from Asus, here it goes, let's start with tip number one. Use RAM with Samsung BDI NAND chips. Yeah, I know, I know, this is not what you want to hear, buying new, more expensive, probably RAM, than what you already have. Thing is that Ryzen works much better with anything running Samsung BDI. BDI is great for Intel as well, allowing for really tight timings and absurd frequencies. It also scales really well with voltage, so it's kind of the cornerstone here. That's not to say that I haven't seen people running 3200 MHz RAM with Hynix chips for example on Ryzen. It's just that BDI has a higher probability of getting you there. Generally everything that's running high frequencies with tight primary timings is BDI. G-Scale however uses Samsung chips extensively, but you can find BDI in a lot of other manufacturers. Google will help you in determining if your RAM is BDI or not, and Regardless of this, we can go to tip number 2. Change RAM settings, meaning straps, tighter timings, after a Windows restart. So for example, boot at your normal strap, for me here it's 2933 MHz, and then restart your computer. In the BIOS I now choose the 3200 MHz strap and going forward you have two options for timings. Either leave everything on auto, a surefire way of letting the board use some absurdly loose timings on your RAM like CL25, or just enter these low timings yourself. The idea is to help the board post with your new RAM speed and strap and then enter Windows only to restart and tighten the timings even more. Mine already booted at CL16, it's like it knows from countless hours of me trying what my preferences are. The first times I did this however it was booting at that mentioned CL25 or even higher on auto. The problem with running the 3200MHz strap, at least for me and my RAM, is that it rarely sticks between reboots. Cold booting is almost always a no-no, that's why I use BCLK overclock to get me there, which leads me nicely to number 3. BCLK overclocking and a lower strap. For example the 2933MHz strap paired with a higher base clock. Keep in mind that using a higher than 104.8 MHz BCLK will drop your PCIe bandwidth to PCIe Gen 2 equivalent, which is anyway more than enough not to gimp your GPU, not in the slightest, so don't worry about this. Also I'd be careful of BCLK overclock and M.2 SSDs. SATA ports however, both governed directly by the Ryzen SoC and external PCH ones, seem to not be affected but this needs further validation. I haven't had any problems with it though. So anyway, using this method you can get 3200 MHz or even higher. I'd recommend using looser timings and then tightening them like in the previous step. This has a much higher chance of sticking through a reboot or cold boot, but in the off chance that it doesn't stick, like you see here, you can try my tip number 4. So we're stuck with an error code 15. The board will not boot, normally you just reset the CMOS and retry. However, one trick that I accidentally stumbled upon is this, pressing the reset button on the board and immediately after, or in short succession, the retry button, will get me a post 8 times out of 10. Just pushing the retry button does nothing for me, or the reset alone. It's this combination and the succession that will make the board post. It's not rare that I turn on the Ryzen system after 1 or 2 days of sitting and I get an error code 15, 0D, 01, etc. Although it ran perfectly fine and stable before. So this is my go-to trick for the moment. However, this trick seems to not be working with 3200MHz strap for me. If that fails, it's reset CMOS, post, then load Windows with 2933MHz strap and then switch to the 3200MHz strap. Yeah I know, really nice, what can I say? And tip number 5, and this is not only for stabilizing clocks on your overclock RAM, as these settings help me post more often with higher clocks like 3400MHz or 3600MHz, as well as stabilizing tighter timings. 
SOC Voltage. Some people swear it does nothing for them. I thought the same, but it did help me get a stable CL16 on my 3600MHz RAM overclock. This is by default 0.8V, but you can raise it safely to 1.2V, which is currently the recommended maximum by Asus. This might also help you post with your desired RAM overclock. The 1.8 PLL voltage. Like it says, even in the BIOS, it helps stabilize BCLK overclocks. This is naturally valid only if you're having trouble with your BCLK overclock. I noticed higher stability with 1.9 volts PLL when running that 123 MHz BCLK needed for the 3600 MHz RAM overclock. Try it, it might work for you as well. Let's not forget the DRAM voltage. Look at your sticks, stock recommended voltage, minus 1.35 volts for 3600 megahertz so i use that even if you're not pushing anything exotic on your high frequency low latency ram paired with ryzen try running higher voltage like 1.4 or 1.45 volts as this will help you post and or stabilize later by the way that's as high as i'd go for daily and 1.5 to 1.55 volts for benching and if we're here, there's also a setting that's helpful during post, when the RAM is being trained at your specified latencies. That's the DRAM post voltage. This also helps me get a greater cold boot post success rate. Set it close or identical to your DRAM voltage and see if that helps. That's pretty much it, there's no other magic or secret sauce involved here. It's a matter of luck, patience and the proper RAM. I wouldn't even worry too much at first about non b die set of sticks. Just see how far you can get yours by applying the different things listed here. I think I hit my wall with the IMC. No matter the settings, timings, voltages, etc., I can't push past 3650-ish or so megahertz on the RAM. I'd love to go higher with these and see how it performs, but sadly, this is all I can do for now. Well, I truly and sincerely hope that this guide helped you just a little tiny tad bit in overclocking your RAM on your shiny new Ryzen platform. If that's the case or not, I want to see your comments, questions and suggestions down below as usual. Thank you for supporting this channel by subscribing and see you next time everybody. Bye bye.